So what are the best lures you can use for bass fishing? I get asked that all the time. One of the things you got to think about when it comes to lures is that they are tools. They are tools to be used to catch fish according to the different situations that you come across. So really no one lure is going to work for everything, but if you have a short list of lures that can cover the majority of what you are fishing for, then that's what you need. So I've narrowed it down to six lures. Like what are the six lures you can, if you can only take six lures with you fishing, what are they gonna be? So these target is basically, you look at the water column, top, middle, and bottom of the, of the water column. If you've got an arsenal that covers that, you're good to go. So let's start off with top water, poppers specifically. Pop water baits, they, pop water, pop, <laughs> popping baits, they are you know, little bait fish size lures with a little uh, cup in the front of them. And what you do is you give them a little pop, and since the word popping, you, you just give them a little tug, a little pop, and, you, and they'll spit out water. And depending on how hard of a pop you give it, you can give more splash, more gurgling, more noise. It's designed to look like a bait fish that's struggling on the surface of the water. And that uh, triggers the instinctive uh, predatory instincts of bass. And they can't stand it, they gotta bite it. They're best used in the warmer months when there's a lot more activity on the surface and they work really well, especially during the fall when the bass are up schooling and you've got bass that are hitting the um, bait fish that are up on top, you'll see them all, you know, bait fish flying all over the place. Well, that's the bass underneath it chasing them. And so you throw a popper in the middle of that and it looks like a bait fish that's struggling and it's easy, easy money, man. It's easy prey for the bass. So they work really well, plus just explosive bites. Uh, you, you throw in a popper alongside docks, alongside weed edges, over the top of submerged weeds. There's a lot of different places you can fish them. And when those bass come up and smash it, boy, it, it scares you. <laughs> you know, it's, it's exciting. And that's a fun way to fish. So you gotta have poppers. They're very, they're very productive uh, lures. The second type, are jerk baits. Now jerk baits can be broken down into four categories or four classes of jerk baits. You have the floating kind, you have the suspending kind, the deep diving, and then the sinking kind. And of those four, really two of them are in every bass fishing, bass fisherman's arsenal. And that's the floating and the suspending kind. Let's break that down a little bit further. The floating kind are better to use during the warmer months, from you know spring to fall, really is you know, so the <laughs> large chunk of the year. They are up on the surface and again mimic injured bait fish. You know they got a slender profile, looks like a bait fish, and you just you know pop, 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 and they dive down a little bit under the water, pause, and then they slowly rise back up to the surface, and you give them a little pop, pop. So you cast it out, let the rings dissipate, and then give them a little jerk, 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 and then let it sit and let it slowly rise back up. Put it, you know, attach it with a snap swivel so it gives it a, the, the mobility so it can go side to side as well as you, with that snap in front, it can go side to side this way too. It can roll and go side. To, and that gives it the most amount of activity, makes it look alive. And how hard you pop it and how many you know, long the pauses are in between really depends on the fish. Uh, that particular day. They could be aggressive biting, so you can sometimes you can just pop, 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 pop all the way back to back to you and not even stop. Other times you have to give it a real subtle twitch and let it sit on the surface for a minute or so. And sometimes while it's sitting there, they'll blast it. And then there's all kinds of different variations of cadences and pauses in between that you can use. You have to experiment each day because the bass typically, well, their moods change, if you will, uh, depending on the day, the season, the weather, water temperature, and those other environmental conditions. So just practice with them and play with them and you will catch fish with them, I promise. The other kind of jerk bait is the suspending kind. And typically those are um, diving suspending. They go down sometimes to 10 feet. Some of them go deeper than that. Those are best used primarily in the colder months. During the winter time, you can get it down to where the bass are at and then just let it hang out with them. They just, it just sits there and doesn't move. It, doesn't, it may, may slowly rise, it might slowly sink one or the other, depending on the kind you get. But just let it sit there and then just give it a little subtle twitch, just enough to make it look alive. And what it looks like is a bait fish that's struggling to stay alive under those cold conditions, because bait fish really are affected by that cold water. And that's an easy prey. That's an easy meal for the bass and they'll, they'll nail it. 
Another time to use them is in the summertime for a similar reason. Summer, a lot of bass are out deep. They may be suspended or over a, a, a hump or a ridge or a ledge. And that's a good time to use a suspending jerk bait to get it down there. And again, with the same kind of presentation. And uh, a lot of times you can get bites sometimes when there's no other way to get a bite. And suspending jerk bait can work really well under those conditions. So make sure you have those two kinds of uh, jerk baits with you for year round fishing. The next kind is a jig. Now jigs, man, I'm telling you what, jigs have been around for decades and they continually produce fish and for good reason. You know, bass just don't become accustomed to them. They continue to fall victim to these jigs all the time. So always have some jigs in your arsenal. And you don't have to have all the different kinds, but just to break it down, there's basically four categories of jigs, uh, basically uh, centered in around the design of the jig. So you've got the round ball jig, you've got the football head jig, there's the swim jig, and then there's a flipping jig. All four could be in your arsenal. You don't have to get and collect them all at the same time, but brief descriptions of each of them. The ball head jig is used primarily either as a finesse jig or as an empty jig, just to jig it with a, with a um, hook on it. You can put a skirt on it, put a trailer on it, use it for a variety of situations. It is used best in rocky or open conditions because of its design of the round head, it doesn't get hung up in the rocks as much, like if you're fishing riprap or gravel. And also because the eye sticks straight up, it's easier to get out of the rocks if it happens to get uh, stuck in there. So round head jigs work really well in that condition and also open water. You can also thread grubs onto them. You can put them inside of, of tubes. So there's a variety of different uses you can have for them, just depending on the situation. But they're excellent jig heads and jigs to use. The next kind would be the swim jig. The swim jig is designed, it's got an eye in the front, and it's designed for you to actually fish it kind of like a spinnerbait. You just reel it in and you can bring it right to you. Now, it gives a little bit of a wobble when you do that. A lot of anglers will impart extra action by um, shaking the rod tip as they bring it in. It gives a lot more action, makes it more lively. Put like a boot tail. A trailer on it or high tech something like that on the end of it to give it a bait fish type provo it's designed to look like a bait fish swimming through the water again you can fish this at any uh, depth of the water column most of the time it's done shallow but you can do it even down deep which means you can use it basically year-round although it's most productive in the summer months but uh, and in the fall when the when the bass are feeding heavily on bait fish but you can use it year-round with with success just the colors on that Stick to your shad colors, your bait colors, so it's going to be white, white and chartreuse. That's basically it. You don't really need to go fancy on it. The next kind is the football jig. Now, the football jig, it's designed to be crawled on the bottom, literally dragged on the bottom, and it kind of wobbles side to side as it crawls on the bottom. So that resembles a crawfish. So put a crawfish trailer on it and just slowly drag it on the bottom and you can catch a lot of fish that way. You can use natural colors if the water's somewhat clear to clear. Uh, you know, browns and your greens, stick with that. If your water's real dingy and stained, then go with a black and blue skirt. That works really well. Football jigs also can be used in rocks. They're pretty good at coming through the rocks without getting hung up. So um, that's, a lot of anglers like to use them in, in a riprap and gravel and, and rocky canyons and things like that. And they work pretty good. You don't really get hung up that much with them. So uh, they're really a uh, popular choice for those situations. The next one and last one is the flipping jig. Now some people call it a grass jig or sometimes people call it a bass jig. But really what they are, they're, they're characterized by having the eye in the front and with a slender profile with a weed guard. Those are designed to be thrown in and through and around cover, especially weedy cover, but also wood cover works well too. They come through that stuff surprisingly well without getting hung up. So you can put a variety of different trailers on them, crawdad trailers, you can put bait fish type trailers on them. There's a, you know, there's a whole assortment that you can do, but primarily just stick to some main colors. You don't have to go too crazy. Again, sticking with uh, what I said before, if the water's somewhat stained, you know, dirty, uh, to clear water, you want to go with your natural colors like your browns and your greens and green pumpkins. And if the water's really dingy and dirty, black with uh, blue. Black and blue skirt works really well. So those are your jigs. You can fish them any depth at any speed. So sometimes you can hop it off the bottom. 
Sometimes you just drag it off the bottom, you can swim it, and you can do it at any speed or any depth, like I said before. So that makes them incredibly versatile. Uh, so definitely you gotta have that in your arsenal. The next one would be your plastic worms. <clears throat> now plastic worms basically come in two different types, your finesse type and your ribbon tail. Both are, are, are useful in your arsenal. The finesse kind have very little action to them. So those are best designed when the bass bite is, is slow is not that, when the bass are, are kind of a neutral to negative feeding mode, at that time usually the bait fish and what it's feeding on aren't very active either. So a, a finesse worm kind of matches the activity level of what's going on underwater. Those work really well. Uh, the smaller ones, the three and four inch ones, work great on a drop shot or finesse rig, you know, or a, a split shot rig. You can put them on a jig head if you want, but that's kind of unorthodox. Uh, but Definitely work them you know, nice and slow, methodically. You can work them at any depth and at any speed. Again, sometimes just sitting and hanging there and barely moving at all and just letting that worm twitch and undulate underwater is all it takes to get a bite when the bass are, are reluctant to bite. The larger size one, say a six inch one, those I like to use in flipping and pitching and into cover. Again, when bass are up into there, say you've got a big cold front that's come through, bluebird skies, the bass have buried up in that, in the bushes and in the grass, and they're not really willing to chase anything, that's when you can use a finesse worm to go in and dig them out. You know, put a bullet head sinker on there, and 50 pound braid, 30 pound braid, something like that, and pitch it into that, in those weeds, rig it Texas style so you don't get hung up and you can get a lot of bass that way. Just make sure when you get that bite, get a good hook set, get their head turned and get them poured into you so you don't wrap up in that stuff and potentially break you off. The ribbon tail worms are for when the bass are a little more active. So spring through fall, when they're up and feeding and, and biting a lot of stuff, this is when you know, that ribbon tail gives a lot of, it gives it a swimming action. It makes it look alive. So again, you can fish this. Most of the time, a lot of guys throw them and the bass will bite it while it's falling. That's like 90% of the way you fish it. But you can also swim it. Throw it out and reel it back in. It looks like something swimming in the water, like an eel. A lot of times you can catch a lot of bass that way. They, they can be thrown in heavy cover. They can be thrown in rocks. They can be thrown next to docks, into lily pads. I mean, you can throw them basically anywhere where bass is hiding and at any depth, similar to jigs. But it just gives it a little slender profile, a little bit different look. And uh, again, bass have been biting these since the 70s, if not earlier. Gosh, when did cream come out with the worm? I can't remember now. Long time ago, <laughs> and they've been productive ever since. Color-wise, you can't go well, go wrong with green pumpkin or with watermelon with red seed. Like if you're gonna have two colors, like that's where you start your 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 tackle box kit with is those two colors for those worms. You don't really need to get every color into the rainbow, but that's those two are gonna be your most productive all the time. So start with those. The next lure in your arsenal is gonna be the crankbait. Now crankbaits on the surface are very easy to use. You throw it out and wind it back in. Boom. And you catch fish that way. It does work. But there's more to it than that. Crankbaits, they are designed to mimic bait fish, that's for sure. And bait fish don't always swim in a straight line. So if you're reeling it in, if you can bounce it off something, like hit it off a, a rock or a stump or a piling on a dock and deflect it, give it a, you know, suddenly darts off to one direction, that often elicits a strike. And if you don't have anything to do that, you can impart it yourself. Reel it down, you can give it a pause. Reel it, pause. Or you can pop it with your rod just to give it a sudden change in direction. Just anything that's on a different, you know, because that's what bait fish do, right? They dart, they, they move around, they pause, they stop. That's what you're trying to mimic. And anytime you make that sudden change in direction, that's a lot of times when the bass will strike. One trick is to, if you got weeds that are under the water, especially milfoil or hydrilla, bring a shallow diving crankbait over and every once in a while you tick the top of that with those weeds you'll get snagged a little bit and give it a good pop with your rod and that suddenly that 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 lure just boom takes off in a different direction that sudden change often elicits a strike so things like that just keep in mind again the best ones to get are like if you're going to start out because there's so many crankbaits to get get a medium diving crankbait one that dives four to ten feet that's going to cover a lot of the area where you're fishing they work best for the warmer months, you know, spring to, to fall, especially in the fall, they work really well. And color-wise, get a bait fish color, like Sexy Shad or Tennessee Shad. 
You're going to want also get a sunfish color like a perch or bluegill. Also get crawdad. There's two different shades of crawdad colors, a red crawdad and a brown crawdad. Red crawdad works best when the fish are up real shallow and brown works the rest of the time. So those are like, and then the last one, I like to get a chrome color, like a chrome with black back, a chrome with blue back. That seems to work year round and it can work with any kind of, um, uh, you, whether you're fishing for smallmouth or largemouth. All right, so let's move on to spinner baits. <laughs> yeah, spinner baits. Spinner baits, I'll tell you right now, when you look at them, they don't look anything in nature, okay? That's just the nature of them, okay. But bass just can't resist them. And so I really don't care about what they're trying to mimic. I care that bass like to hit them <laughs> and eat them. So that's, that's why I throw them, and this is why they've been so productive for decades. They really have been working for a very long time. People get tripped up a little bit in deciding what kind of uh, spinner baits to get. So if you're just starting out, it's very simple. You, first of all, color, white or white and chartreuse. That's gonna be like 90%, no matter where you are in the country, that is gonna work for you. For size, 3 8 ounce, that's like a universal size that's used uh, especially from, again, September through, or September, through spring through fall. 3 8 ounce works really well for that. You might wanna heavy up a little bit during the winter because you're fishing deeper, so maybe a half ounce works really good. And then blades. There's three different types of blades, right? There's Colorado, Indiana, and willow leaf. Most of the time, a double willow leaf spinnerbait will do you well. So just focus on that, and you can throw them anywhere. You can throw them in any kind of cover where bass lurk, alongside docks, along weed edges. You can bring them through, surprisingly through, a lot of cover without them getting hung up. So don't be afraid to throw it in the muck. If you think you might get hung up, well, that's a good place to cast it, because sometimes, a lot of bass anglers have passed up that area because they're afraid of getting hung up. Don't be afraid. Hey, what's the worst thing that can happen? You go in and dig it back out. But a lot of times that's where the fish are and that's a lot of times you catch a lot of fish. So those are like the six lures to always have with you no matter where you go, no matter what time of the year you fish. Hope that helps. For more tips and tricks like this, visit BassResource.com.